These are the spinning wheels that keep the lights on for four million Americans. As long as the water's flowing, this keeps spinning. Yes. We were granted rare access to see where the drought-stricken Colorado River becomes electricity inside the Glen Canyon Dam in northern Arizona. Glen Canyon Dam. When these workers built the dam in the early 1960s, they did not expect the mega drought that has been crippling the West for the last 22 years. I don't think those have been visible since uh, 64, 65. Plant manager Gus Levy just noticed those LBJ era construction tracks and worries if the Colorado River keeps drying up, all of the turbines could look like this one currently shut down for maintenance. So if this wasn't shut off right now, this would be filled with water. It flows in from snowpack in the Rockies that's also suffering from the drought. When you get into 2024, it looks a little bit rougher, you know, if we'd have two more bad winters. So how many feet till you can't produce power? Uh, 46 and a half feet. Less than 50 feet. That's correct. Are you worried about that? I mean, this is this is, whole facility is here and it's producing power for 4 million people. We've been concerned about it for some time. In other words, Lake Powell behind the dam is now less than 50 feet above the spot where water can pass through. If it drops below that point, the power plant shuts down. And a coalition of environmental groups just released a report that says Glen Canyon Dam was never built for water levels this low. They warn it could actually stop critical water from moving on through Arizona, Nevada, California, and northern Mexico. With that in mind, just last month, federal engineers were here at Glen Canyon Dam coming up with worst case scenario plans. Gus tells us they have eight solutions to move the Colorado River. None of them good. Pumping water around, over, or under the dam would all be massive construction projects. Showing the units at 100% speed. If western states don't immediately and drastically cut down on their water usage, there is a very real chance these turbines could spin down to zero less than 600 days from now. If this green energy plant were to go offline, the rest of the aging and stressed grid would have to immediately pick up extra work. The power companies would have to find and buy more expensive electricity, likely raising bills for millions of people. The states have to come up with a plan, uh, I think fairly soon, or I believe the government's going to impose a plan. And there's wild disagreement across the West. One city in Utah, St. George, wants to build a pipeline to pull even more water from the dam. People are just flocking here in droves. The county water manager tells me it's their legal right based on a water pact signed in 1922. How big is the pipe and how far does it have to go? So it has to go over approximately over 100 miles yeah. and it's about 60, so you could easily walk through that pipeline. I think there'd be overwhelming resistance to them putting another pipeline in here. It would also cost at least $1.6 billion, while here at the dam they are scrambling for every last drop. They're even borrowing water from a reservoir up in Wyoming and releasing less water towards Las Vegas and Lake Mead about 300 river miles downstream. 40 million people depend on this river for and, water. And you've said before, it's not doomsday yet. No, no, but it's certainly a concern. We could sit here and list off all the ways there are to create electricity. You can do that in any number of ways, but there's only one way to get water. It's one of those things that you either have or you don't. At Lake Mead, I'm Dave Malkoff, The Weather Channel. I'm the reporter from that story you just watched. Since you're still here at the end of the video, you may want to subscribe. I've got more than 800 stories just like that for you to look over. In fact, YouTube is recommending this one to you right now. These are the documentaries I've done around the world. We're also on your smart TV. Look for these logos, the Weather Channel or Pattern.